Hey guys, what's up? Good morning and welcome to my weekly cosmic weather forecast where I sit down with my cup of tea on Monday morning and invite you to do the same as we discuss the upcoming cosmic weather events for the week as they relate to astrology. I'm talking about the week of July 9th, 2018. So we start out on Monday the 9th with the moon in Gemini and Venus is going to leave Leo where it's been for a couple of weeks and move into Virgo. So when Venus is in Leo, we tend to overindulge a little bit. It's a very celebratory, romantic type of vibe. We're attracted to flashy things, parties. We tend to overdrink, over party, overeat, that kind of thing. So when Venus moves into Virgo, we can think of it as a purification process of all of that. So whatever area of your chart Venus rules, this is where you're going to be casting a critical eye and paying attention to details and definitely detoxing and stripping away anything that is not supportive of your overall health. So if Venus rules your seventh house, you might suddenly feel like eliminating friendships or relationships that are not supportive of your health if you are Experiencing this in your fourth house, you might feel like suddenly having a garage sale, cleaning the house, getting rid of old clothes and furniture, that sort of thing. If you would like help figuring out what area of your chart Virgo, Virgo rules, definitely reach out to me. My email will be down below. But yes, Virgo is all about health. It opposes the 12th house of Pisces. We also have Neptune retrograde in Pisces, which is also supportive of cleansing and detox. So definitely a time where we're going to start thinking about our health, thinking about our spiritual well-being, and wanting to make some very serious changes and give those areas attention. Then on Tuesday the 10th, we have Jupiter going direct. Yay, so excited. So we've had so many planets retrograde, and like we've been talking about, this has been so much internal work. It's been so much introversion and internal processes. And with Jupiter, the first of these planets going direct, we're going to start to be able to finally implement some changes externally. So while Jupiter has been retrograde in Scorpio, of course, whenever we're talking about Scorpio, we're talking about these crazy deep levels of transformation, death, rebirth, these themes. So with the retrograde, we've really been in the, in the Phoenix process. We've been burning we've been in the burning process, right? So when it goes direct, this is when we get to finally rise out of the ashes and we start to be able to move forward with some of these changes. So incredibly positive. However, it's still gonna be in Scorpio. And Jupiter doesn't really love to be in Scorpio. It's gonna be returning home to Sagittarius in about four months. So that'll be a really positive shift. We're still in Scorpio, so we're still dealing with deep emotional work, but with this direct movement, we are going to be able to start to move forward. I think it's been retrograde for so long, we've just kind of gotten used to this feeling. So I pay attention on Tuesday, tune into the energies and see if you can see this, this change. Uh, then moving into Wednesday, we'll have the moon go into Cancer. It's going to oppose Saturn. And then on Thursday, it's going to form an opposition to Pluto coming into our new moon on Thursday in Cancer. Now, this new moon is also a partial solar eclipse. So with all of these factors, I don't think that this new moon on Thursday, the 12th, is going to be super low-key for anyone. I think that it's definitely worth noting. So first and foremost, it is a new moon in Cancer, which tends to highlight our insecurities or areas of our life where we don't feel totally safe and secure, right? It's also forming a direct opposition to the planet Pluto in Capricorn, which is also highlighting our subconscious, sub-level fears, worries, etc. So I feel that this new moon is probably going to be bringing to our awareness situations that highlight an area of our life that doesn't feel completely safe and asking for transformation uh, as a result of figuring out why that is. 
It's also going to be forming a trine to Neptune in Pisces and uh, Jupiter in Scorpio. So this is a water trine, which adds to this deeply emotional, highly sensitive period. So it's definitely going to be a day where people might, might be walking around a little bit more sensitive than normal, a bit more emotional, so something to be aware of there as well. And also, it's a partial solar eclipse, so we're entering into eclipse season. And I like to think of eclipses as gateways or this network of portals that work together. So if you've never honed in or paid attention to eclipse season, maybe start with this one because this is the first of the season. And eclipses really give us these glimpses into the past, into the future, and we can use them in a really powerful way to track our progress. So perhaps on this new moon, partial solar eclipse, which is always a great time to set intentions on a new moon, which you can then watch develop over the next lunar cycle. With this new moon, because it's on a solar eclipse, you can watch these intentions develop through eclipse season. So maybe take that extra moment on Thursday the 12th to set some intentions, check in, maybe write in a journal how you're feeling, write down some themes that you're seeing in life currently, and then watch how that unfolds. So then moving to Friday the 13th, we have the moon in Leo, and we have a beautiful trine between Venus in Virgo and Saturn in Capricorn. So we've been dealing with Saturn Capricorn themes this whole lunar cycle because we had a full moon in Capricorn a few weeks ago and now we've got a new moon in Cancer which is opposing Saturn and Pluto in Capricorn. So we've been dealing with these Saturn themes. We've been dealing with authority and this can be, you know, Saturn is when you get a call from say the parking division because you haven't been paying your parking tickets and now you owe them like a million dollars, right? That's Saturn. Should have handled your shit. You should have handled your responsibility. You didn't. Now you got to deal with this. So that obviously isn't very fun to deal with. But there's also all of these positive aspects of Saturn that perhaps through all of this transformation we've started to see illuminated probably because at a certain point we just had to handle our responsibilities and maybe now we're starting to see a little bit of positivity or a little bit of payoff so positive aspects of Saturn I mean never mind it's kind of like when you go traveling or you go to a festival or whatever and everything's all chaotic and you feel very ungrounded and then you go home to see your parents and they've got the fridge stocked with food and the sheets are extra clean and the bathroom is always spotless and Everything is just grounded and yeah, it's authority and they do expect the most out of you, but there's this really stable feeling of security and it's real consistent love and something that you can always depend on. So that's the positive aspect of Saturn. And also, like I talked about in my last video, Saturn really does give us rewards where they're due. Hard work does pay off. So going back to this transit of Venus trine Saturn, Venus and Virgo, Virgo likes to work. In fact, Virgo doesn't even really know what to do with itself if it's not working. So this week, I feel that we're going to suddenly be seeing some payoff for the work we've been doing and really feel a sense of positivity suddenly towards an area of our life that we've really been called to take very seriously. Perhaps we had some resistance come up. Perhaps we were a little bit resentful. But suddenly maybe we're going to start to feel differently about that as a result of some personal growth. And then moving into Saturday, we'll have the Moon and Leo conjunct Mercury, which of course is very positive. We can feel really good about an area of our personality, feel a sense of pride and confidence. And then moving into Sunday, we'll have the moon go into Virgo. It'll trine Uranus and Saturn. Nice little Earth trine. Again, that's really nice, stable, practical, grounded energy. And then on Sunday, we're going to have the moon 
in Virgo conjunct Venus in Virgo. So Sunday, definitely, I think we're going to see a second wave of that Venus in Virgo energy we talked about on Monday. So there's going to be some area of life that's really calling for us to do some cleansing, detox. Maybe we'll just feel like something isn't quite right. Uh, yeah, so it's going to be calling for some upgrades in that department, particularly involving our health. So that about wraps it up, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you have enjoyed this video, please do give it a like and a share. I truly appreciate it. And if you would like to reach out to me for a natal chart reading, you are more than welcome to do so. My information will be down below. All right, guys, have a beautiful new moon, and I will see you in the next video.